All right, so today's the day we build the Dominator Evolve. I'm so super excited about this, guys. Kind of emotional. I shot my first 60X with this bow, but it's 3D time and I am dying to make a killer 3D bow. I love the Evolve, I love it. However, the new fatter grips on the PSCs, not exactly my thing. That's the reason I've stuck with the Dominator, but we're gonna try to get invested in both worlds today. So we'll see how it goes, but I'm super excited. We're gonna be building strings, swapping cams. I'm gonna freak you guys along for the whole thing. Specs. This hair is terrible. I can't believe I'm videoing like this. So much better. Now I can work. So the next step in this process is to get some Evolve cams. I don't want to confuse anybody. This isn't a full throttle HD anymore. All right, so I don't even really have any evidence that this is gonna work, but I'm pretty convinced. So I'm gonna hop on the computer now, and I'm gonna show you guys how I know about what to make the strings and cables. All right, so check this out. So this is PSE's Product, product support page. Oh, broke the chair. All right, right here, PSC tune charts. Pulls this up. Whoa, we're out of focus. Let's lock that in. All right, so these are all the tune charts from the 2017 bows. Now the closest in axle, axle that we're gonna have is gonna be the Evolve 35. So now I just go through this list and find the Evolve 35 click on the view details link, and now I have the cable length, which would be 32 and 32.56. So I'm just gonna write that down, 32.56. So that's the cable length. The yoke length is 15.75, and the string length is 62 and a half. And the axle to axle is obviously 35, which is important. So then I go back into the bow list, and find my bow, the Dominator Max MD. And all I need from my bow, because we're basically what we're building is a Evolve 35 with an even longer axle axle, as far as the strings and cables and cams are concerned. So all I need to do is figure out the difference in axle axle between my Dominator and the Evolve 35, and then add or subtract that difference to the Evolve 35's string and cable length. My axle axle is 40 and a quarter with a difference of five and a quarter inches. So I need to add five and a quarter to the cable length and the string length, and I'm gonna leave the yoke length the same. 37.8167.75 <laughs> string cable, string yoke, boom. Those are my results. So now for the really hard part, to pick a color. Now everything I got on the wall is 452X. I'm gonna go with Fury. I don't have as many options of Fury yet, but I'm still experimenting with it. So let's take a look. Hmm. So my goal today isn't to teach you how to build a string. 
I'll save that for another time. I'll still kind of bring you along the process. You might learn something. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go 28 strands on the string and 28 strands on the cable. I'm still not sure how many strands on the yoke yet. We'll just have to see what kind of fits into the yoke bushing thing. I changed my mind on the color. We're gonna go all white with orange serving. So I've got the string laid out now. I'll lay out the yokes and the cables and catch up with you guys on the serving jig. All right, so I've got all five strings laid out here and I've got the first cable on the jig. So it's time to serve them up and I'm gonna show you guys how I get approximately the right serving lengths. This part's pretty simple. Just grab the corresponding cable or string, whatever, off the original bow. And obviously they're a different length, but what I'll be able to do is once I get this twisted up, I'll just lay it out next to it and just mark it for the same length of actual serving. Now it gets a little tricky for center servings and servings for string stops. By then I'll just put the strings and cables on the bow, put an arrow on the bow, and mark where I want my center serving and where the string stop hits. And other than that, it's pretty straightforward. All the strings and cables are built. Now I gotta get the actual cams off the Evolve and on the Dominator, and then we can put her together. Pretty much had to max out the last chance press, but got it all undone. First dry run. If it inside the limb, that's a start. Now this is gonna be interesting and not really something I've thought about, but because I'm going from a cam and a half system to a binary cam system, I've got an extra long axle for the top. Probably what I'm just gonna end up doing is the little yoke harness deals off the end of the limbs. I'm just gonna have to have them there and nothing on them. So as far as all the little cam shims, I just kind of lay them all out, see what I have to work with. And to be quite honest, when it's t these two totally different cam systems, you just gotta kind of wing it and go by eye the first time, tune the bow, see how it works and tinker from there. But that's part of the reason I love this.
top cams on and I can't help but smile. I decided to just kind of center it up in the middle of the limb. Probably try the same thing for the bottom. Bottom cam's on too now. I feel kind of bad because it seems like there's a lot of like time lapses in this video um, that doesn't seem like it contains a lot of content, but I feel like it wouldn't really, I wouldn't really be kind of showing you along if I didn't include all that. And, and obviously it would be painful to have to watch through the whole five hours it's taking me to build this. But, oh well. It's time to throw her back in the press and see how the strings fit. It's coming alive. This is nuts. It's such a thing. Beauty. I'm done staring at it. There's still work to be done. I'm gonna mark where I wanna put my center serving and string stop serving. And then I guess we get to shoot it. It's a long draw length. And unfortunately, we lost some poundage. I guess I'll be getting some new limbs. So if I'd have to guess, I'd say it's maxing out at about 32 inches draw length right now. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that. I'm gonna try to get it around 29. Put it on the scale, see what it's pulling. I'm guessing it's probably around 50 pounds. Um, I might actually have another set of limbs that I can throw on this and see what we can do about it, but still pretty sweet so far. So it's three o'clock. I got some other stuff to do today. I'm gonna call this the end of day one. I didn't think this was gonna take this long. Um, I should have known. I don't know what I was thinking when I started this. I thought it might gain poundage or stay same. I don't know. It makes sense though that it lost 15 pounds of draw weight. I am super fortunate though. I've got some other limbs that were in the shop. I'm pretty sure that they will thin max this bow at 65. I'm super hopeful. But this was a great day um, as far as progress goes. Obviously I got the cams on, got the strings and cables all built. So it's only downhill from here really. I'm gonna swap out the limbs. Another thing that I'm noticing that I didn't take into consideration previously is where I'm gonna end up putting the limbs for limb deflection. I didn't, I wasn't thinking through all this. I just knew what I wanted. I wanted a dominator with the thin grip with the Evolve cams on it. We're still gonna make that happen. I am more than guaranteed about that. So, but this is what it looks like after day one. And I should have no problem finishing it up tomorrow. I will see you then. Well, you know how I kind of said that it was going to be like tomorrow I was going to finish the bow? I kind of have a confession to make. It's a couple days later now. Let me just take you out on the range. It's done. I've completed the bow. It took tons of modifications, but not only did I complete it, I shot my first squirm around with it. Not phenomenal, but it's a 300, 322X, pulling 73 pounds with my 3D setup with X cutters. So not too shabby. I'll take it back into the office again and kind of show you what it took.
Well, I changed my mind in my shirt. Another day's gone by, but I had this fancy lighting set up for filming a turkey hunt deal. So I figured I might as well come out here and just kind of show you guys the bow now that it's all done. This is the Devolvinator. It's pretty sweet, turned out great, but it took me some time. I had to solve a few problems that I wasn't really expecting. Um, so the biggest thing here was an issue issue with these cams being center pull technology and the dominator not being. So I kind of knew this going into it. I've built some other bows and stuff and I've never delved into this idea of the center pull cams and the non-center pull bow. But I liked the idea so much I wanted to give it a shot and I'm really glad I did because it turned out to be absolutely no problem. The bow tuned just fine. Uh, the way it was. So what I ended up having to do is, first of all, I made sure the cams were going to fit inside these limbs. They absolutely did. Second of all, when I put them on, I had a, the original bow here was a Dominator MD with the mini drive cams. So it was pulling 60 pounds. When I put these limbs, the same limbs on and just swapped the cams, it pulled 45. That ain't going to cut it. I'm setting this bow for 3D and even indoor some. Um, the other thing it did that I noticed right away is it lengthened the brace height to seven and seven eighths. Now these are the things I knew was going to happen, um, but I don't usually go through the uh, the mess of calculating out all these other specs. I just kind of do it because it is what it is. Telemarketer. That was one issue, so I fixed that problem. Had limbs put on, and now it was pulling 73 pounds. Next issue, the cam link. So the way this bow is normally designed, well, give me just a second. Here's the PSE Evolve. And this is, this is what I've come up with. I haven't really delved into this very much. I just knew it was a problem and I had to fix it. But my theory is, the reason I was getting so much cam link is if you look at the limb design on this bow, and you compare it to this one, the limbs are so much wider. I don't know if that increases stability. Maybe it has something to do with the axle to axle being shorter, which I think would have the opposite effect. But once again, I haven't really looked into this. I just had to fix the problem, so I did. So what I have to do? Well, to eliminate cam lean, you usually twist up your yokes, but guess what? This is a binary cam system. You don't really have that option. Even though this cam kind of has yokes, it's designed to keep the string and cables all in one unison line. But with some modification, I was able to make it so I could yoke tune this bow, which was game changer. So what I had to do, and this looks nuts right now, this is temporary, but the bow's shooting so good, I'm probably not gonna mess with it as long as it doesn't cause issues. But if you look right here, I gotta stay in the light. If you look right here, and I'll run some B-roll of this, but if you look at the, the yoke system here, basically I had to make it, I custom made cables for this bow, so it wasn't the typical one string comes around the harness and up and over the cam, and then one string, your other part of the cable connects to the harness and goes down to the other cam, blah, 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 blah. I made this all one cable, just as if you would make a basic yoke cable, uh, can, a basic bus cable, if you will, with yokes. Um, just the yokes were really, really long, and I had to stop it from being able to close in. So if I didn't reintroduce this harness to the yoke, the yokes pinched together down here and rubbed the heck out of the cam. So I tied in that harness and crimped down brass knocks on top of it to keep it from sliding, just as extra precaution. And it's worked pretty well. I've shot it like that quite a few times now and the bow shooting phenomenal. Obviously I did that on top and bottom, uh, twist up the yokes, the cam limb was eliminated. Problem number three, I suppose, was um, now I've got the bow drawn around the draw weight I want it to. I've got the cam lean issue solved. I've now shot the bow through a chronograph the way it's set up and it's perfect speed shooting my X cutters at 382 grains, or the speed around 285. 
feet per second. So I've got all these other issues solved. The next issue is with the rest centered, everything centered, my cables are being pulled over so far that they're almost in line with my pin. Like my pin's here in my sight picture and my cables are here. There's, I cannot see to the right of my pin. So I knew that wasn't gonna be doable. So what I did, I tried all kinds of things. I took a cable slide off a of beast, tried that because it doesn't flex, didn't work, tried all kinds of other stuff. Basically what I was running into is with the higher let off, there's more weight that transfers into the cables. I've got a super high brace height, all this kind of stuff. Basically equal the terrible equation for flexing the tar out of that cable slide. So that cable slide actually comes all the way darn near the end of this cable slide. And it's under so much load because it's pulling 73 pounds and then with 85% let off, which is what I'm running it at right now, it's putting so much weight onto those cables that it was pulling them in really far. So what I did to fix that problem is I just shimmed the cable slide over and out a little bit just to flex it. So it can still flex a lot, but it's flexing it and keeping it still out of the way. Now all these problem solution ideas that I came up with were just kind of totally off the top of my head, like in the office, just putting it together. I'm, I'll try this and it's worked so far and it's shooting pretty darn good. Um, so just as a basic overrun of my specs right now, it is shooting, as I said, 285 feet per second with a 380 two grain arrow ish X cutter um, at about 29 inches and 40 inches axle to axle seven and seven eighths inch brace height what else am I missing max is out at 73 pounds draw length this was cool the draw length minimum is about 28 and a half draw length maximum was like 33 and a half it was or 32 and a half it was ridiculously long so, and that has to do with the axle to axle in the length and brace height. All in all, it's a super awesome bow. I'm gonna be taking this bow down to Metropolis most likely. I'll probably do like a vlog style video of Metropolis, just kind of showing off ASA tournaments. It should be awesome. So stick around, stay tuned. Should be pretty cool. That's all for now.